Hi, I'm Dr. David Adley. In today's demonstration, we're going to be looking at epicycles. What are they? How do they create apparent retrograde motion? And what's their role in the Ptolemaic model of the solar system? Hopefully you remember that apparent retrograde motion is caused when one planet, the planet closer to the sun, laps another planet, the one farther from the sun. But we haven't always known that. And one early explanation for why planets undergo apparent retrograde motion is to employ something called an epicycle. So in today's video, we're going to be digging into them. Let's get started. I've got Nap Labs up and running, and I'm going to go back to my solar system models again. We were there for retrograde motion, but this time I'm going to bring up the Ptolemaic System Simulator. So now, instead of seeing planets in their appropriate orbits, both going around the Sun, we've got the old school geocentric or Earth-centered solar system. So we've got our Earth down here in the middle, and then a planet, in this case it's preset for Mars, on its epicycle out here. So what are the different parts of this system? The big circle here, the one surrounding the Earth, that's called the deferent. And then the epicycle is a smaller circle attached to the deferent. So the deferent is the main orbit of the planet. And the epicycle is going to travel along the deferent at constant speed. And then the planet, in this case Mars, is going to travel along the epicycle at constant speed. So we're maintaining those rules that were established by Aristotle for planetary orbits. But when we combine those motions, we're going to get something really funky. So you're going to see Mars go into these kind of loop-the-loop -loop motions. One just happened. And in these loop-the-loop -loop motions, Mars gets particularly close to the Earth. This is why Mars, well, this is why the ancients supposed Mars looked particularly bright during apparent retrograde motion. Hopefully, when you went through the retrograde demonstration, you figured out that the reason planets look really bright during apparent retrograde motion is because they're really close to the Earth. That's true generally, is that if you have a light source and you bring that light source closer to the observer, the light source starts to look brighter. And if you take it farther away, the light source looks fainter. If you don't believe me, try it yourself. Get a flashlight or a friend with a cell phone or something and have that light source just go farther and farther away from you. And you'll see it's going to start to get much fainter. And the same thing happens with planets. So when Mars is in this loop-to-loop -loop motion, it's particularly close to the Earth, say right there, and therefore looking particularly bright. You'll also notice that this system has been set up in such a way that Mars is over here and the Sun is over there. So we re replicate the second important observed feature of planets like Mars, which is that they're opposite the Sun when they go retrograde. Now, let's look down here. This zodiac strip is showing the apparent motion of the Sun in yellow and then the planet, Mars, in red. So when Mars goes into this loop-to-loop -loop motion, when I start the simulator again, you'll notice it's going backwards compared to its normal behavior. So normally it's mostly moving left, east, but when it goes into that loop, it pauses and goes backwards. It goes right or west. At exactly the right time to be opposite the sun, and when it's doing that, it's really close to the Earth. So this explanation for apparent retrograde motion fit all the known facts available at the time. And this system was really, really successful. You could explain not just Mars, but any planet using this system. So we could switch to, say, Jupiter. Jupiter has, you'll notice, a much smaller epicycle compared to Mars's, but we'll get the same general behavior. We'll get those looping motions when Jupiter is opposite the sun on the sky, and Jupiter will look like it's going backwards. And we can use this system to predict all sorts of things. When planets go retrograde, how bright they are when they do, where they are in the sky at any given time compared to the background constellations. 
So we have this system that's able to predict lots of different outcomes of different experiments. That's a scientific theory. And it's a big part of the reason that the geocentric model for the solar system stood for so long, for 1400 years almost, from Ptolemy up through Copernicus. And the reason it was so successful is because, well, the reason that it stuck around for so long is because it was so successful. It made lots of correct predictions. It's only when the observations started getting much better with the invention of the telescope and the efforts of Tycho Brahe that we started to figure out that this model was insufficient. You'll be learning about that, about the heliocentric revolution, in a different video. But until then, play around with this simulator. Look at what different planets do and how their epicycles are different. Convince yourself that planets like Mars and Saturn, they're always opposite the sun when they go into that loop motion. Have fun, and I'll see you in class.